Hi, I'm Wesley, and I'll be your guide on hardship today. Hardship. We all face it. There's no getting around it. And we all have to get through it, but that doesn't make it any easier. Hardship happens when something doesn't go your way or something bad happens, such as losing a parent or loved one, um, moving to a new school, getting bullied, or just not being included uh, at school in general, to name a few. But it's important not to get discouraged. As we will cover today, sometimes people face awful hardships, going through the lowest of the lows and seemingly having no hope, but they give up and come out stronger because of it. When you face hardship, you learn to become more appreciative of life and everything that it offers, because without the bad, there can't be good, so it must be good to have bad sometimes, right? At least that's the way we choose to look at it. Throughout this video, we're going to watch clips on how one boy come, overcomes hardship at school through the help of some great friends. So we'll start out with that first clip and then throw it over to Hannah and she'll uh, read us through a picture book about dinosaurs and lead us into our next discussion about hardship. So yeah, what's your favorite vine? What's your favorite? My favorite vine is the one where he's like, road work ahead. <laughs> I sure, sure hope, hope it, it does. does. <laughs> oh, oh, oh no. no. Oh, God. Oh, no. Hello everyone. Today I'm going to read you a story. It's called When Dinosaurs Die, A Guide to Understanding Death. So this book would be great for children and families that are dealing with the concept of death. Um, they had a loss of a loved one or a friend or someone they know. Um, it teaches the readers about death, um, what it means, and ways to cope with those feelings of sadness. And so I'm going to read it to you guys. What does alive mean? Every single living being has a beginning, a time to be alive, and then an ending or death. During your lifetime, your body is busy doing its work. You breathe, move, eat, see, hear, touch, taste, smell, grow, talk, play, think, and feel. Yippee! You're alive and a part of this world. Dying is a part of life for every living thing. Death happens for different reasons. Someone may die after a long illness, so everyone knew he or she was going to die. Other times, it's a complete surprise. A life can be very long or very short. Even someone just born may not be strong or healthy enough to stay alive. Others may die from being hurt in an accident. Even when doctors and nurses do everything possible to help, some accident victims do not recover. Sometimes lives are lost violently, such as when someone kills someone else. It may be in a war, or for reasons that are very hard to understand, such as poverty, prejudice, and drug abuse. Someone may even be so upset and without hope about his problems that he kills himself. This is called suicide. All kinds of death make people sad. Most of us live long, healthy lives. A child, a mother, or father usually lives until he or she is very old. When someone dies, her body stops working. Her heart stops beating and breathing stops. The brain doesn't send or receive messages. She no longer can see, hear, touch, taste, smell, eat, play, feel, or think. She cannot move. Someone dead may look asleep, but she isn't sleeping and she cannot wake up. When someone you care about dies, you may have all kinds of feelings. It may be hard to believe that a dead relative or friend won't be around anymore. You may have a hard time getting to sleep or have strange dreams or nightmares for a while. Losing someone who is very special to you is very hard to understand. You may feel so sad and lonely that it hurts. These feelings are not always easy to talk about, but it helps you if you can. It can be very scary when someone close to you dies. You might wonder about how your life will change. You might worry about whether you will die too, or if someone else you love will die. Things you weren't afraid of now become may become scared to you now. It's also natural to feel angry when you've missed someone so much. Some days you may push away 
the very hugs you need. There are lots of ways to let out mad feelings without getting in trouble. And here's some examples. Try running, um, riding your bike, swimming, basketball, skating, etc. You may want some time to yourself and, and time to be near those you love best. When someone you love dies, there is no right or wrong way to feel. When someone in your family dies, your life is likely to be different, but you hope your friends will treat you the same way they did before. It may be hard for your friends to know what to say or do to help you feel better. Everyone has to decide how to say goodbye when someone important to him or her dies. This is a special time to show your love and respect. Friends and family will want to help you honor the life of your friend. A funeral is a special ceremony for someone who has just died. Your parents can help you decide whether to attend a funeral. You may have many questions about it. Going to someone's funeral or memorial service is one way to let a family know that you share some of their sadness too and some of their good memories. Even if you don't go to the funeral, you can help out at home, offer extra hugs, or make up a special goodbye poem. There are many special ways of doing things to help us say goodbye for someone who has died. Some families burn incense and bow low in front of their grave. Others sing and pray together at the grave. Part of their circle is left open in honor of the dead one's spirit. Still other families spend several days in mourning by sitting Shiva. They sit on a simple wooden bench and light a candle every day. Some families have the coffin buried underground. Others choose cremation. Many families continue to honor the dead long after they have died. They may say prayers or prepare special offerings. Some things about death and dying are very hard to understand, even for grown-ups. No one can know for sure what comes after death, but almost everyone has an opinion about it. If you have questions about it, ask your family or your religious leader. Even when someone you love dies, you don't lose them completely. You still have your memories. That person can always be a part of you. There are many, many things you can do to remember someone. And here are some examples. At other times, you may be busy having fun, making friends, learning something new. This is not forgetting the one you love. It just means you're doing other things. Hooray for life! And here at the end is a glossary of some words that children might not know, like coffin, cremation, um, will, things like that. We chose this book, um, When Dinosaurs Die, because it coincides with our thematic unit book, which is The Red Kayak. And in The Red Kayak, a young boy dies, um, a tragic accident in a kayak, and he dies of complications in the hospital. And the main character is the character that actually, the guy that actually saved his life, um, found him in the water. And so after the young boy dies, the character throughout the book experiences depression, um, sees depression in the child's family um, and around the community and has to deal with the concept of death um, of a close one that he, he used to actually babysit the child. So... He has to deal with the death of that child. Um, and so that's why we chose this book. Um, this children's book would be a great book to coincide with. That uh -oh. Book. Oh. Do you know how to tie your shoe? No, I don't know how to tie my shoe. We can teach you. Wrap it around. Wrap it around like a rabbit. <laughs> feed, feed this loop through.
through <gasps> and tighten and then another and then adjust. Boom. Yay. Wow, thanks friends for helping me tie my shoes. Now, now it's your turn. turn. When Gordo fell down because he didn't know how to tie his shoes, his friends didn't make fun of him. Rather, they rose to the occasion and helped him. Gordo was probably pretty embarrassed because he didn't know how to tie his shoes even though he was in college and was likely made fun of it made fun of for years and years because of it. But Hannah and Wes decided that Gordo needed their help. We'll have to wait and see what comes next in this thrilling series, but for now, let's turn it over to Gordo and his conversation about Bill Gates. Have any of you ever tried a new sport, activity, or maybe a new subject in school, and you failed completely at it? You didn't know what to do, and you just wanted to give up on it forever? Well, you're not alone. I'm sure most of you have heard of Bill Gates. He's one of the richest human beings to ever walk this earth, and he founded a company that everybody knows, Microsoft. Things weren't always easy for Mr. Gates. Before he started Microsoft, Bill tried to start up a company called Trafodata. This company tried to make traffic counters, and as you can imagine, the company fell flat on his face. However, Bill didn't give up. His business partner and him brainstormed what else they could do, and finally came up with the idea for Microsoft. The rest is history. Next, we're going to go back to the epic story of me not knowing how to tie my shoes. Hey, okay, let's see if I got this <laughs> now. Crisscross, applesauce. Tighten, yep. Yeah. First we rabbit. One rabbit. The two rabbit. And then the adjust and tie it. Look at that! I can tie my shoe! Nice. Nice. Hey -o. Hey -o. It looks like through the help of Hannah and Wes and their unique but effective instruction strategies, Gordo was finally able to learn how to tie his shoes. Not being able to tie your shoes for so long can be a major setback, but Gordo was able to fight through it and finally learn. But this isn't the only feel-good story we've got for you today. Next up, we have three unique stories about individuals coming over hardship in their own ways, showing the variety of forms that hardship can take and the multitude of ways that you can use to overcome it. <laughs> Take note as to how each story involves those different strategies, but also how they contain similarities in the overall process of overcoming hardships. Hey everyone, so today I'm going to do a book trailer on Out of the Dust, and it's by Karen Hesse. Um, and this is a book that is placed during the Great Depression in Oklahoma. And the story is told of a young girl, um, her name is Billy Jo, and she tells the story of life on the farm in Oklahoma during the Great Depression, um, all of their struggles with the dust storms, poverty, things like that. Um, it's very, it's a very heart wrenching book um, where it really portrays a story which no child should have to go through. It's very depressing, very sad. Um, deals with poverty, death. Um, she has death in the family, unexpected death, um, hunger, um, depression, things like that during this time. Um, and yeah, she loses the life of a loved one in her family, and then she has to learn to cope with those feelings during that difficult time, um, which has relation to the Red Kayak, which is our um, thematic unit book, so that's why I chose the two. Um, and this book is written in free verse, so it's all poetry, free verse poetry, um, and it's beautifully written um, in the heart of the Great Depression. It covers Oklahoma's dust storms, um, the environmental and emotional turmoil that happened during this time, uh, follows the life of Billy Joe and her family. Um, and it is a story of hope and inner strength. And it's just a beautifully written book. It's won some award, a lot of awards. Um, and it's just a great book to check out. So hope you enjoy. On the topic of overcoming hardship, of specifically for kids, I think it's almost imperative that we take a look at Wonder. Well, we all know how it's a great feel-good story, but let's take a deeper look at just how Augie overcame a hardship that he was facing. When Augie first came into the school, he didn't know anyone, but that's not what set him apart. Rather, it was his treacher Collins syndrome, which causes a facial deformity that made other kids notice and start to bully him. Despite this, Augie stayed strong throughout never sitting to his bullies and making friends all the while until they go off to an overnight camp and kids from another school begin targeting him. That's when Augie's classmates realize how they need to stand up for him because he's not just another classmate, but he's their friend too. With this experience in hand, Augie becomes accepted by everyone in the school, effectively putting his hardship in the past. But 
we all know that Augie will have to deal with people outside of school, but at least he knows that when he's in school, it's safe, and that he has all kinds of kids on his side fighting for him. Now we're going to take another look at hardship, but this time in one of its more severe forms. We're going to take a look at the story on Broken. This is about a man named Louis Samperini and his whirlwind experience in the United States military. Growing up in California, where he experienced being a juvenile delinquent, Zamperini became a great runner while trying to evade the police. Eventually, he propelled himself into the 1936 Olympics. You could say that he was the real deal and had turned his life around, but then came World War II. Feeling a duty to serve his country, Zamperini enlisted into the Army Air Corps, where after a several turn of events, he found himself a prisoner of war in a Japanese camp. Here he faced starvation, humiliation, slave labor, and other forms of torture. Through strength and perseverance, Zamperini was able to survive the camp and return home. The treatment that he endured was more than anyone should have to experience, but yet he was still found a way to come out of it all. Hardships can seem impossible, as it does here, but humans are strong and can get through a lot. So the lesson here is that even when something seems impossible, find something to hold on to that will help you get through. Through the help of Hannah and Wes, I no longer have to worry when I walk down hallways where I might trip and fall over my own laces. When I see that my shoes are untied in the future, I will be able to take control of the situation and prevent anything like that from happening ever again. When we were looking at this book to create a theme that would encapsulate the entire story, we pretty quickly stumbled across hardship. We saw hardship because Brady would have been a pretty normal boy had he not been asked to search for his missing neighbors, found the son, and brought him back from the brink of death only to have him die a few days later. Now, that's hardship. But see, with Brady, it still wasn't done. Brady went back into the water and found the kayak sunk, which didn't sit well with him because kayaks aren't supposed to sink. And eventually he discovered a drill that had been stolen from his father's shed with red specks on it, the same red from the kayak, and later he found out that it was because of his friends JT and Digger digging holes into that kayak and killing his neighbor. That all sounds like hardship to me. And Brady had to carefully maneuver himself through the whole situation, being careful not to make any decisions that couldn't be undone without first considering its outcomes. Through careful thought and determination, Brady eventually decided to turn his friends in, despite their pleas not to because they didn't mean to cause any harm. But Brady knew what was right, and he overcame the voices telling him to protect his friends, overcoming the hardship of making an impossible decision. I like turtles. Hello. Get hit it.